All right, everyone. Welcome to the lecture on machine learning and financial applications. So in this uh, lecture, we're going to cover the uh, very interesting topic, which is uh, uh, reinforcement learning and its use in portfolio optimization. Um, instead of going in full details, we are going to only provide the fundamental basics of the technique used in the context of portfolio optimization. So let's get started. Right. Okay. So first on the expected return and risk of a portfolio. So when we look at a portfolio, it uh, consists of multiple assets, right? So it can be uh, asset A and asset B and a useful uh, notation, uh, which you can take is, uh, for example, we, we measure the return. Uh, let me just write this uh, R1 uh, for asset one and return for asset two. And uh, maybe there are uh, any of that, right? So these are the, the set of uh, assets we have and uh, we denote it as uh, RP. So it's our portfolio uh, variable, right? So these are all these are variables uh, and it consists of a set of variables uh, which essentially correspond to the set of assets, right? And uh, we model the uh, the returns or more specifically log returns of an asset uh, as, as, uh, as our variable, right? Instead of the, the price, the asset price uh, itself. Okay, so uh, now the, the now this is individual variable and this is portfolio level. So we want to look at um, two quantities that we usually uh, care, care about. So first one is expected return, right? Or expected log return. So uh, so this is the uh, the variable that captures the return of the portfolio and want to look at the expected value, right? So expectation is usually denoted as um, W, which are the weights uh, uh, transpose and the mu. So mu stands for the expectation, right? So, so for example, uh, the expected return of S1 is mu1 and then same for mu2, mu1, right? So this is essentially a weighted sum. So we, we weight each uh, returned by the, the corresponding width we allocate to the assets. So this itself is a, it's a vector and it's just a, a dot product between two vectors. Uh, we can also ask, look at the, the variance of this variable so that we know more about how variable the portfolio return is. Right? So this is uh, uh, something I denote as uh, sigma p squared as well. So this is just the same thing. We are measuring the variance of this random variable at a portfolio level. So uh, this is something you can calculate as uh, the transpose of uh, W, the weights, times the variance. Uh, also, this is the variance covariance matrix of the assets and then uh, the weight itself. Um, so uh, so one, one thing to take note is that here, this is a scalar value, right? So it's a scalar. Uh, because uh, if we say we have uh, N assets, right? And then this is... Uh, 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 one times n in terms of dimension, and this is n over n, and then this is n over one, right? So, so by default, we denote a vector as a column vector, uh, right? So this is uh, this many rows and this many columns. Um, so, so naturally, this will cancel out, and so we have a one by one, which is a scalar, right? So this is a number, it's a scalar value that measures how variable a portfolio is, right? So individually, we have. Um, uh, one, which is uh, uh, the variance of itself, which we can denote as a sigma one square, right? Or we can denote as a sigma one. So, so this will talk about the, the, the variance covariance matrix. So essentially, this gives us the measure of the portfolio level uh, variance, right? Or the volatility, if you take the square root, this gives us an idea of the expected return for this portfolio, right? So this is the, uh, the risk and return at the portfolio level. So let's move on. Uh, let's uh, talk more about the return uh, itself. So return, if we look at uh, uh, just a random assets, and then we say the return from tier to period T to T plus one, it can be denoted as the price of uh, T plus one, right? So this is asset price minus the current price, and we measure the percentage change. So this is percentage change. Right, and we can equivalently express as uh, 
uh, uh, the next period price divided by the this period price and then minus one. So, so this is, is, is essentially a, uh, uh, this is called one plus R format. So R is uh, sort of the return we talked about earlier, the simple return. And we might minus, minus one to get the simple return. So this is one plus R return, um, right? So, um, so this itself is how we calculate for a single asset for each period, what is the return? Right, and of course, so we can take a log to say this is a log return we have. Uh, so this is how mecha mechanically we would calculate it. Now moving on to the the expectation, right? So what is the expected uh, return? So uh, for an asset, we have uh, multiple returns, right? So for example, we have uh, period one return, period two, order to period t, right? So um, the expected return uh, can be calculated as the sample average. So we just add up all the individual returns, right? So this is a small t and t will go from one to uppercase t. So this is how we would calculate the sum of all the individual returns and then divide it by the total period, right? So, so this is the average return that captures the, the expectation of the return of this asset, right? So this is for single assets. Of course, when we roll to multiple, roll up to multiple assets, so you say we have uh, the the uh, return as a random variable. So now we treat it as a random variable for asset i and then uh, another asset j. So how do we calculate their covariance? Meaning, uh, if if r i is the asset i's return changes, right? So how does it impact um, the, the the asset j's return? So this is something we. Uh, can use uh, something called covariance, right? So this is covariance between these two variables, R and Rj, and it's calculated based on the the sample uh, covariance. So this calculator is going have the um, the Ui. So let me just express expectation of Ri's Ui, right? So this is expected return for the first asset, and then this is expected return for the second asset. UJ, right, so we can use this formula to calculate the, again the expectation, and then uh, we want to look at how much deviation I have for the these assets uh, compared with the mean, right? Compared with the mean, and this is the deviation for this asset, and then I have another deviation for the other assets, right? So this is deviation from the mean, and they multiply together, right? So this is how. Again, we are just plugging the definition of a covariance. So this measures the uh, the total variation, and then this is a multiplication because uh, it essentially cancels the the negative sign. And and we want to do this for multiple periods. So this is time period t, right? Uh, okay. So we do not need to have a have a locus here because it's, it's average. And then this is for each period, and we want to do this for multiple periods. So t goes from one to t. And then we take the average. We need to minus one just to correct for the 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 balanced uh, uh, sample sample covariance estimation, right? So this is uh, uh, nothing more than plugging the definition of a covariance between two random variables uh, based on the samples we have, right? So so again, this measures the covariance, and we can denote it as uh, sigma i j, right? So it's simply sigma i j, meaning the covariance between uh, asset i and asset j, All right? So, uh, so now we can aggregate everything together using just one big notation. This is uh, what we uh, saw earlier. Uh, this guy here, this guy, sort of gives us a map of the co covariance structure, right, of the portfolio. So we know that we have n assets, right? So this is gonna be a big matrix, which is n by n, right? So n columns and rows. And each cell gives us an idea of what is the correlation, uh, what is the covariance between the corresponding x-axis and y-axis, right? So this is uh, one as one as a two, or do you as n as one as a two, or do you two uh, as n, right? Um, so so now look at this guy. So this guy is the the covariance between uh, the first asset and the first asset itself, which means it is just measuring the, the virus of asset i, uh, the first asset, right? So which means this sigma i, which also co corresponds to uh, sigma uh, one square. 
right? Because it's just merging itself. Now, what about uh, this one? This one is corresponding to the second assets and the first assets. So this will be sigma to one. So one means we'll just take the second assets and measure the co covariance with the first assets, right? Based on the formula here. So we can just plug in the formula and then calculate this covariance matrix. So we can do the same for uh, for all the, uh, the other cells. And then uh, essentially this triangle, uh, this diagonal uh, is gonna be the variance of each asset. And the off diagonal, uh, the non diagonal elements measure the covariance between different assets, right? So this is uh, sort of a, a, a map that describes us the covariance structure of the portfolio, right? Um, and and uh, and uh, these these uh, two summary statistics are nothing more than a single uh, summary, right? A single summary point to measure. Uh, what is expected return at portfolio level and the expected uh, uh, virus at the portfolio level as a single number, All right? Um, so the traditional, the so-called mean virus optimization or MVE uh, wants to do some optimization, right? So we have portfolio level. Now uh, the optimization can go into this. So we can maximize Right, the the expected return, which is uh, uh, provided by this one. So this is our expected return. We want to maximize it over the W as a random variable. So now this W is a random variable. This mu is treated as a fixed quantity. Right. So we we'll first estimate what is the expected return, and then treat it fixed. And now we're optimizing over W. In other words, we want to uh, get the optimum set of weights or or, or asset allocation. Right for each asset so that we maximize the expected portfolio return. Um, so where does the the, uh, the portfolio variance uh, come in? So this is uh, coming as a constraint. So such that our variance, which is uh, given by this quantity, is less or equal to um, some predefined uh, quantity. We just put, put it as a sigma square, right? So this is user given uh, threshold. And then uh, of course, we need to sum up all the weights, which is, uh, this is both indicating it's, it's a, a vector, it's equal to one. So meaning all the weights should sum to one. So this is the one way, which is uh, we maximizing the uh, the expected return and control the risk. Another way is uh, we minimize the the, uh, the risk itself. So we want to look at what is the minimum, uh, what is the, the weight such as it gives us the minimum uh, variance of the portfolio such that we we can attain a specific level of uh, portfolio return, right? So this is uh, our constraint. And then again, we have the constraints that they, they need to uh, sum up to one, right? So this is just two ways uh, to look at the traditional uh, mean variance optimization. Again, for, for the first case, the intuition is that we want to maximize the, so given a certain um, risk, right? So given within a certain uh, risk level, we want to maximize, we want to find the asset allocation scheme that maximize our uh, portfolio return, right? The second is that we want to achieve a certain level of return for, for the portfolio, but want to find the allocation scheme such as the risk of the portfolio is minimized, right? We want to uh, minimize the risk and uh, that's the different objective. So these are the two ways we can uh, uh, use to do mean variance optimization. And uh, there's no reinforcement learning here because it's just an interaction of, uh, of a traditional uh, optimization technique for the, the mean variance uh, uh, optimi optimization scheme. Now let's talk about uh, the uh, portfolio uh, management uh, or optimization using reinforcement learning. So this reinforcement learning really tries to do the same thing, right? We want to come up with the set of weights, W, such that uh, the, the, the return or expected return is maximized or the, the risk is minimized. So it depends on how we set our objective. And uh, to introduce the reinforcement learning, we need to look at the, uh, the very important process we use, which is called Markov decision process, right? So we just uh, start with the the key uh, tuple, which we use to denote, to describe the whole process. This is our state space, um, action space, 
transition probability, reward function, and the discount factor, right? So let's just uh, dissect. So this is our state, right? So state includes the information we need to provide to the agent to make a decision, right? So every time we are want to make a decision, then we need to look at what we know about the current state, right? So this state could be uh, something like what is the price, uh, what's the current price, or you can go up to past 30 days, for example, it's usually contains the price information uh, at time, time period T. So this is a state at time period T. I indicate the market indicators, right? So different uh, market indicators can provide to the agent. And also what is my current uh, weights across the, the different assets. So this is uh, T minus one because we are still using the previous uh, weights allocation, right? So this is uh, something you can use to encode the knowledge we uh, the, the agent will have in order to make the best decision. Now the decision comes in the action space. So action is simply, uh, uh, we denote as AT, action. Uh, and this is, again, is the set of weights we have, which again is expressed as the, the weight allocation for first assets at time period T, second assets, and all the way to the, the nth assets, assets, right? So this is our weight allocation. And again, we have a uh, constraint such as uh, it should be, uh, if we sum up all the weights, right? So if you sum over i, this is i, it should be one. So all the weights should be summed, up, summed to one. And now uh, let's look at the transition probability. So this is describing the environment. So uh, specifically, if we move, if we are located uh, at uh, the, the, the state T, right, ST, we're in this state, and we take the action AT. Now, where do we land next? Right? What we're gonna observe next in terms of state. So this is a uh, next state is T plus uh, X plus one. And this uh, P describes the transition probability. So it's gonna be a probability, right? And, and it's gonna be, for example, 0 0.5, 0 0.8. So this describes the probability. And essentially it's, uh, it's given by the environment. So, so depending, on, depending on the specific, uh, algorithm we use, we may or may not uh, want to learn this function. So, so again, this is a probability, and uh, it should sum to one in terms in terms of all the possible states we can we can uh, uh, transition to. So, so, so this is just a probability function, and uh, reward function is also given by the environment, right? So in this case, we can just simply use the uh, the log returns as our uh, return from the environment. So we do some action. Right, so we first take action, and the environment will lend us to some states, and then based on this, we will observe some reward. So this rewards in the context of uh, portfolio management can be just the portfolio level return, right? So we know how to calculate it. For example, for uh, for the T's return for the time period T, and I'm going to take the current period price over the previous period price, right? So this is our percentage return uh, for asset I. We need to weight it by the corresponding weight of the assets. So this is uh, our weights for asset I as time period T, right? And then we need to sum across all the different uh, assets. So this becomes our total portfolio level uh, return. Now we can take a log to say this is log return as the return for the uh, for the portfolio. And again, this is the, the, the response signal from the environment to see how good the quality is in terms of the action taken, right? And uh, lastly, we have uh, we have the, the gamma here is essentially a discount factor to discount future rewards, right? So how, how the further we move away from the current state into the future, the less important it's gonna be in terms of the reward. And uh, lastly, uh, this this action here is actually governed by something what we call the the uh, uh, action uh, the the policy. So we have a policy, right? We usually denote it as a pi, and this policy uh, we want to find the best policy. So this star means that this is the best policy. So how do you find it? Um, it's going to be something you want to to uh, maximize. So this is uh, like a max meaning we are looking for the best uh, policy out of many policies. So pi is a variable here. And then now how, how do we say what is the best, right? What is good and what is worse? So this is measured by the something called long-term return. So 
we have the the uh, a different uh, so this is little r uh, so this is gamma let me write this in gamma this is r r means uh, our return from the uh, the current period uh, states and then the action we take so which is uh, uh, so we are in this states and we take this uh, action to get at so this is essentially at now we you we are in st the count states and we take the action so what is the so this essentially gives us what is the reward if we do this right? So if we, you are in a state st and we take action at, what is the reward? And then we're going to discount it uh, um, by the the parameter uh, gamma here. So this gamma discount factor. Uh, we are not going to consider just one immediate return. So we need we need to consider all the future returns. So 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 that's why we have a. Uh, 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 this uh, T here, and we're going to add, of course, different T's all the way from zero to, to the final period. Now, what this means is that, um, for example, if we take action at the first point and land it to S1 and land to S2, so all this uh, R1, R2 is going to be added in order to give us the total long-term return. So we add this uh, together across the whole period. And then this gives us the long-term return. We want to find a policy such as the long-term return is maximized. And this gives us the optimum policy. All right, so, so this is how an agent uh, in reinforcement learning makes a decision, right? So this is our decision uh, criteria. All right, so that's, uh, that's quite a bit of information. And, and uh, let's see how it's going to be uh, applied in this framework. So this is our agent pi. Pi produces uh, action. A, which is the set of weights, right? And then the, the reason it can produce these actions because it looks at the, the rewards we observe from the previous period and then the state, right? So this is our input. So the, the action goes to environment. Environment will provide a response in terms of the comments, the, the next reward and the next state. And this iteration continues. This is uh, the, the general uh, reinforcement learning framework. And uh, lastly, I would like to talk about uh, uh, the, the value functions. So value functions essentially measures the value, right, of, of either it's a state or state action pair. So let's, uh, again, first look at what is the total uh, return. Let's give a formal definition. So total return, we can put as a, a GT. So um, if we were to make a decision at this point and uh, the future can be uh, different possibilities, different scenarios. Now, what is the, the return I can look at? So for a specific path, I'm looking this one, this is the path we are looking at. Uh, there are individual uh, returns here we need to add up, right? So this is uh, uh, this is R D plus one. So now, now let's use uppercase R uh, for, for, the, for the rewards for the next period. So this is the next period rewards. And then uh, we can continue the, the process. So this is uh, next, again, the next period. We need to discount it by gamma, right? And then uh, all the way to the last period. So this is, uh, this is how we would add up. So this is, again, the discounted future rewards. So if we move, uh, for example, to R, T plus three, this would be gamma square. So this discounting is, uh, is uh, exponential. Right? So this uh, discount could so this gamma is itself is number between zero and one, and by squaring it, uh, the, so the, so it's gonna be smaller, right? So the future, the further away the 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 distance, the smaller the the weight is gonna be. So this is again gives us an idea of the long term uh, discounted return. Okay, equivalent equivalently expressed as uh, the current return, right? And plus the gamma times the next period. Uh, long-term return. So we can we can do the conversion by extracting the, the gamma outside and then uh, plug in the definition. So it's going to be the same, which means our uh, total return comes co consists of the current immediate return and the, the follow-up uh, long-term return, right? So this is our immediate reward and then this long-term return for the next period and then discounted by gamma here, all right? So now how is this going to be used? Um, if we want to look at, uh, so there are two type of uh, value functions. The first one is the, the state value. So it looks at a certain state, right? How valuable it is, how valuable it is to, for me to go into that state. 
do the weight uh, allocation, right? So this, this is denoted by V and um, following the specific policy. So this is V, there's a little pi here. Um, so now, so now uh, how do you measure the, the state? This is gonna be expectation, right? Because the future can be a scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, different scenarios. Uh, and so how do you measure the, 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 the goodness of uh, this, uh, this policy? So we take the expectation, right? Expectation. Um, of, uh, of this over this pi, which is our policy, over the possible long-term returns we can get, right? And we start from from S, right? So which means if we were to start from S, right, where we are we are located at this state, what is the expected long-term return? So that is our state function, uh, state value function, right? So expected long-term return. And again, we can plug in the, the the definition here. So say this is again our expected immediate reward, right? Which is our R plus one, this immediate reward, uh, such as we are at the current state and plus the, the expected future reward, this gamma here, uh, expected future reward, B plus one and uh, conditioned on the current state S. All right, so again, this consists of the immediate expected return, a uh, reward, and then the long-term uh, return for the, for the next period. So this is how we can uh, calculate. And if we were to really go into the definition, right? So we can further break it down by the definition of the transition probabilities and action probabilities. So what does this mean here? This means that if I were to uh, uh, be in the position where the state is S, right? I would follow the policy. So I would I'm in state S and I would follow the policy to take action A. So this is action A. And this is governed by the policy. So pi is a function that maps S to A, right? So this is given the S, I would decide which action do I take. So this is a probability. So after I take the action S and I mean state, state S uh, and I take action A, I would land in the new state, which is uh, S prime, right? So it's a new state, uh, it's conditioned uh, on the current state and action A, right? And I also get a reward which is uh, R, right? And this is governed by my transition probability. So this is from the environment. This is from the, the policy. So environment says that if I were to uh, be in a position where the state is S and then the action is A, I would transition to the next state S prime and get the rewards at the same time. So this is my trans transition. And now if I were to do this, right? What do I get? So I would get uh, immediate reward R and plus the future discounted, uh, the future discounted uh, long term return, right? Expect in the expected uh, in, in expectation. So, so in other words, I would have gamma, which is this discount factor, uh, multiplied by the the, the value, uh, the state value of the next state, which is S prime, because now I'm at the next state, and uh, again I'm following pi here. So this is my long term uh, return in terms of a state value, right? State function. So now, now this quantity, this just described one path, right? So we take from states to A and then transition to S prime and then gets uh, the, the reward R and then this is how, what we get. But because of randomness, right? Because of uh, different possible uh, evolutions in the future, I need to take into account multiple possible uh, extensions, right? So this is essentially doing the weighted sum. So I need to sum this, but I need to take into account these probabilities. So this is summation over the possible uh, transition probabilities over S prime and R. This is transition over possible action, right? And then this is a, a waiting factor, waiting factor, and then this is the, the, the long term return. So this is how we can actually calculate a single uh, state. Of course, you, you, you might ask the question, now in order to cal calculate this guy, we need to know the future state value. So this is itself is uh, uh, is is not in in a way well well defined because in order to calculate the current value, I need to know the future value, which I do not know yet, right? So this uh, re requires a bit of recursion, and uh, and it's 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 not something we're gonna di discuss now. But essentially, uh, we can assume that uh, this is takes some value, and we iterate uh, and and the algorithm. Uh, so that the estimation gradually 
uh, improves in terms of pro proximity to the true value function. All right, so that's for the, the uh, state value. We also have the action value, which we denote as Q. Of course, it's action that we need to look at the state we have and the action we take following pi. Right? So this is in a, defined in a similar way. We still use the GT, this is our long-term return, given that we have a uh, state S and uh, action action A, right? So, and with the expectation of a pi here. So this is uh, related to the, the the value function, but now we're looking at just uh, the, the, the action value uh, function, right? So it can be also equivalently defined as, uh, now we have the action ready, so we have the state we have action. Uh, so next, we will be looking at, uh, so we have the state action, what do we have next? Next would be just the, the, the transition from the environment, because we do not need to take action again, right? So we will transition to the next state, prime s prime and uh, gets the reward r. And this is our transition mobility from the environment. And then what is the reward we have? The long term the long term return. So long term return is consists of the current immediate reward plus the future discounted return, right? Long term return. So essentially this is uh, this is our uh, it should be our next state. So we're at next state ready. Right? So next state. So we have next state and we also look at the next action as well. So because we're at next state already, now we want to define it as a function of the next action value function. Then it's gonna be uh, the next action value function, right? And then, but we are not sure what is the next action. So there's a waiting here. Uh, so the, the, the so let me just create some space. So we are taking the, the next action following some certain policy pi this is S prime, A prime. So this A prime is not sure which exact action we take. That's why we need to weight it by the policy. So we need to take the action prime given that we're in S prime. Right, so this is probability of taking the action and we're just doing a weighted sum. So we need to sum it. And then this is a weighting factor. It's a weighting factor. And uh, sum over all possible next actions, right? So this is the definition of the, the action value function. So this action value, this is a state value, and both can be used to, to learn a good policy, right? So if we learn a good policy, such as the, this, these are the good, uh, uh, are well estimated, then we can use, for example, the action uh, function to say, uh, when I'm looking at a state S, I just choose the action such that the Q function, which is the action function is maximized, right? So, so choose action that's, looks the best for me. So that's how we can use it to determine what is the next action we can take. All right, so that's uh, that's in a nutshell of the the, the, the fundamental basics in, in reinforced learning and its context in portfolio management. Uh, so that's it for this lecture and uh, thanks for watching.